The Russian army is a complete disaster from beginning to end. They have untrained, poorly fed, ill-equipped, disorganized, underpaid, and completely demoralized soldiers. This creates a perfect recipe for a major failure. According to a report by the UK Ministry of Defense, we should also add a little vodka to this mix. Out of the more than 200,000 losses that the Russians have suffered since the war began, a significant number are caused by non-combat issues, with alcohol consumption being a prominent factor. On March 27, 2023, a Russian telegram news channel reported an alarming number of incidents, crimes, and deaths associated with alcohol consumption among the deployed Russian forces. Heavy drinking is widespread in Russian society and has long been tolerated as a part of military life, even during combat operations. Russian commanders acknowledge that alcohol abuse greatly hampers combat effectiveness. This can be clearly observed in video footage of Russian troops arriving in towns where their first action is to break into and plunder local stores for food and vodka. The sight of heavily intoxicated Russian soldiers and conscripts is repeatedly witnessed. This is the condition of Russian conscripts as they arrive at bus terminals and airports to be transported to training centers. Many of them arrive totally drunk. Even inside the buses that transport them, they can be seen drinking vodka as if it were a party, and many times the consumption is encouraged by the officers who carry them. There have been reported incidents of accidents occurring in the buses that transport them since the soldiers, and probably even the drivers, are drunk. The training centers in Russia are characterized by complete chaos. The barracks are filled with heavily intoxicated soldiers, presenting a disordered and chaotic environment. They continue to consume alcohol without interruption, even when they are required to line up in front of their officers. The issue of problematic alcohol consumption extends beyond those mobilized for pre-war training. It reaches all the way to the battlefront in Ukraine. Russian soldiers seem to resort to any available substance to induce intoxication. Disturbing images captured by Ukrainian soldiers in a recently abandoned house reveal glasses filled with ceramic cleaner indicating the desperate measures some Russian soldiers take to achieve a state of intoxication. And here, we have purported evidence of bottles containing ethyl alcohol that are believed to have been consumed by Russian soldiers stationed in the Kherson region. These images suggest a concerning pattern of alcohol consumption among the Russian soldiers deployed in the area. What stands out the most in these videos is the tolerance of alcohol consumption by officers within the Russian military. This is highly unacceptable in any professional army worldwide. In no other army would a soldier be permitted to be in such a state, publicly displaying their military uniform while heavily intoxicated. It appears that vodka drinking holds such a central place in Russian culture that it is even tolerated within the military. In this video, Andrei Gurulov, one of Vladimir Putin's key allies, not only fails to condemn the incidents depicted in the videos of intoxicated Russian soldiers during military mobilizations, but also highlights that these soldiers are never sober. This suggests that such behavior is deemed acceptable and a part of the Russian way of life. But how did vodka become so central to Russian culture that it is even tolerated by officers on the front lines? The significance of vodka in Russian culture and its tolerance within the military can be traced back to historical factors. In the past, the Russian government had a monopoly over vodka production, which served as a major source of revenue for the Russian Empire. It was Ivan the Terrible, the first Tsar of Russia, who initiated this and managed to unify much of the territories we now know as Russia. He initially recognized that vodka hindered the efficiency of his soldiers and blamed it for many of Russia's problems. But he later realized the strategic advantage of vodka consumption in pacifying the population. Vodka made people more docile and easier to control. Manual laborers, many of whom were in captivity, tended to rebel constantly if there was no vodka. When there was vodka, no matter how bad and hard the worker's life was, he would come home at the end of the day and pour all his sorrows into the vodka bottle, and all would be well. Ivan utilized vodka to pacify and unify the diverse cultures and peoples of the region that would become Russia. 
he decreed that the state would take over all vodka production to supply it at a subsidized price in the newly conquered territories. This not only generated revenue, but also acted as a tool to annex and maintain control over new peoples. Throughout the Russian empires, vodka distribution became a significant aspect, with the state monopolizing its production and distribution until the 1917 revolution. There could be small craft stills, but the government had such a large scale of vodka production that it made it virtually impossible to compete in the market. Moreover, it could use force against anyone who dared to try. When the communist revolution took place in 1917, Lenin tried to change things. He no longer used vodka as a tool of domination and pacification, although, like all other state enterprises, vodka profits continued to support the state. Lenin even launched campaigns against the drink, precisely because he considered vodka to be something that made Soviet soldiers and leaders less effective. However, when Stalin took power, vodka regained its previous role as a pacifying element and became a standard provision within the Soviet army. Soldiers were even provided with a daily ration of vodka. In 1942, during World War II, the consumption of alcohol among Soviet armies was staggering, with the Western Soviet army alone consuming 1 million liters of vodka, the Stalingrad army drinking over 400,000 liters, and the Transcaucasian army consuming 1.2 million liters of wine. At the end of the Soviet era, during the period of Perestroika and Glasnost, Mikhail Gorbachev initiated a major campaign against vodka and even implemented a ban on its sale. However, this prohibition led to unintended consequences. Individuals with alcohol addiction turned to the underground black market to obtain alcohol, while others resorted to brewing their own alcoholic beverages at home. This ban also resulted in increased consumption of industrial alcohol, including medicinal alcohol and the use of toxic substances containing alcohol, such as pesticides, detergents, and cleaners, for intoxication. This led to a rise in poisoning incidents, including rumors of soldiers consuming airplane antifreeze to get drunk, although these stories were never confirmed. Shortly after the ban, the Soviet Union dissolved. While the dissolution cannot be solely attributed to the lack of vodka, the prohibition may have had some influence. The Russian people, it seemed, could be more easily controlled when drunk. Following the dissolution, vodka production in Russia transitioned from state to private hands, with close ties to President Boris Yeltsin's oligarch friends. The end of the Soviet Union brought about an identity crisis for many Russians coupled with economic difficulties as the country transformed from a superpower to a developing nation. This resulted in an even higher consumption of vodka, which was already prevalent. Boris Yeltsin himself was known for his fondness of vodka. Currently, Russia and other former Soviet Union countries have the highest per capita alcohol consumption rates in the world. Alcohol consumption starts at an early age, with significant quantities of vodka being consumed. Putin attempted to curb vodka consumption by promoting beer consumption, establishing Oktoberfest-style festivals in Russian cities. While beer consumption did increase, it did not necessarily reduce vodka consumption, as many Russians view beer as a mildly alcoholic soft drink that even children can consume. It makes sense, for someone who is used to drinking vodka with 70 proof, beer with 5 proof doesn't even tickle. Certainly, for them, it is the same as a soft drink. In social media discussions, some users have jokingly suggested leaving thousands of bottles of vodka in the occupied areas of Ukraine as a means to weaken the occupying Russian forces. However, this idea is not new. During the Second World War, the retreating German forces sometimes left their alcohol stocks behind in the hope that intoxicated Soviet soldiers would be less effective in battle. However, due to the vast number of soldiers in the USSR, no amount of alcohol could hinder their determination. The civilian population in Germany then had to endure the consequences of encounters with drunken Soviet soldiers. Therefore, leaving alcohol as a tactic may not be as effective as many think. That concludes today's video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to watch the next one.